Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. For all things Vespa, check us out, ScooterWest.com. So today I'm going to talk about replacement of the speedometer cable. On all the modern Vespas starting in 1996 with the ET4 up to around 2014, 2013, Vespas used a mechanical speedometer cable. And essentially it's just a housing with a little cable that spins around inside and that transmits the front wheel speed to the speedometer. And unfortunately they're a common failure point of all this era of Vespas, you know, over whatever that is, 20 years. Um, I'm gonna go over all the steps on how to change out the speedometer cable. Whether you have an old ET4, ET2, which was made from 96 up till 2001, or 2005, or an LX, that's kind of the middle range, made from 2006 up to about 2013, or any of the GT range up until 2014 where they went to electronic speed, on, uh, speed sensor, which is much more reliable. But we're talking about changing the cable. Let me show you how it's done. It's pretty much the same steps, regardless of your scooter. This is a replacement cable. We stock replacement cables both aftermarket that are high quality out of Italy or the original Piaggio part. So you can check out our website, scooterwest.com for the different variations. And of course there are different sizes for the various bikes, whether it's the ET4, or the LX150 and LX50, those use the same cable, that's what this cable is. Uh, the GT range, a couple different variations on that cable, all the same length but different ends based on the years. So, you want to search for um, the year making model on our website to find exact cable that fits your scooter uh, and get your speedometer back working. So let's jump right into it, go over to basic tools needed. So I'd say this would be an intermediate level job for somebody who has some hands-on experience wrenching on a scooter, but as tools go, you only need some basic tools to complete the job. Just the basic set of combination wrenches. Here I got a 17 millimeter wrench to remove the mirrors. You may need an eight millimeter um, socket or a combination wrench to remove the speedometer cable. Uh, the, the speedometer cable bracket, I highly recommend that you have a really short Phillips screwdriver or a small ratcheting style Phillips screwdriver to undo the bracket. Got a flat, flat plate screwdriver. I'm gonna take the front wheel off all the modern Vespas use a, a six millimeter Allen key to remove the front wheel, make the job a little easier. I'll cheat with a power driver, just some other basic tools. Nothing special. Obviously, if you have a newer scooter, like 2010 through 14, they're gonna use the, um, the star style fasteners, the Torx fasteners, um, so you need a set of those. Let's jump into removing the bodywork as needed to pull the old speedometer cable out. So regardless of the modern Vespa you have, you're gonna to need to remove both the front and rear handlebar covers and the horn cover. I have plenty of other videos that cover the steps on doing this, especially if you're doing this job on a, a GTS. You can find a lot of my other videos that show how to take these um, covers apart, including I think there's a video I did several years ago of removal of all the body work on uh, many of the modern Vespas. Get the mirrors out of the way. I use a 17 millimeter wrench to loosen this little lock nut dealy that's part of the mirrors. Pretty straightforward. Get a flat blade screwdriver and just carefully pry that badge away. You really want to be extra careful. You use a plastic uh, spudger of some sort to pull it off. Single screw located right underneath the cover. Cover shifts up, pulls right out. That's pretty standard across the range of modern Vespas. A single screw right below the headlight. I'll put my hand nail right there. See, I held the screw so it doesn't fall into the bodywork. Many di different techniques to hold a screw. You can put grease on the tip of the, the bit. You can magnetize a bit. Uh, three different ways to skin the cat there. And from the back side, camera's not going to really get it, but there's two screws. And on the other side, and that pretty much 
covers, uh, the fasteners that hold the front section of the handlebars. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the front half of the handlebar covers. And you usually wanna get your finger in here. There's uh, tabs. The side obviously was easy. This is an older scooter. One of the tabs is broken right there. Uh, kind of common for an older scooter to maybe broken for various reasons. Um, just the age of the plastic. Uh, kind of pull the handlebar covers away. It also hooks into the, the top. Remove all the connectors, which are for the headlight, and uh, in this case, the, um, the turn signals. And the last one right there. Kind of hard to do with uh, one hand, but it's possible as pushing a little tabs to uh, release the connectors. See this old bike, somebody's uh, glued the handlebar cover back together. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do on an older scooter um, with these plastic parts. Once a scooter gets pretty old, they may not be uh, available still. We oftentimes still have them in unpainted finish, but that can be pretty expensive to repaint. Um, but just keep that in mind, this is where you change the headlight bulb. Plenty of videos on how to do uh, the steps of changing the bulb or upgrading to an LED. Uh, so you can see right here, we have the speedometer cable. That's where it connects to the bottom of the speedometer. I will tell you on the LXs, they sometimes were prone to breaking the speedometer. So uh, before you go replacing the cable, you might look, make sure there's no cracks in that threaded um, part right there that goes into the, the cable. I've had customers and my uh, mechanics that work for me, they've changed the cables without removing the glove box, but I'm gonna remove the glove box. It makes the job so much easier. Uh, you have access and it, the cable kind of goes through some zip ties typically. So take the extra steps, remove the glove box, and quickly re remove the, the five screws that hold this glove box on this LX. One thing I like about the LX out of all the Vespas, modern Vespas that is, it's the easiest Vespa to disassemble. Nice and tight. I haven't been removed for a while. Get the key out of the way. And of course this is the easiest one, so there's gonna be no struggle in here. It's just gonna come right off. It just kind of shifts down and pulls right away. So that's the glove box. One other thing that if you're having problems with the, the glove box door, you want to check this little latch. This, this cast aluminum or zinc or whatever it's made of, um, these things sometimes will break. Um, pretty inexpensive part to replace. Ironically, customers just asked me how to change one another day. So there's that little piece. You can see it's, it's retained by a little spring and it just goes right in that plastic. Uh, do hickey. So pretty much all the Vespas have some sort of arrangement a little different on the GTSs. It's all plastic on the GTSs. Ironically, it has less problems, but there we go. Let's get back to the cable here. So you have the speedometer cable. It's going right here. It goes right through this clamp, or sometimes it will go through the zip tie, just depending on what model. Uh, but you know, it is possible to pull it right through, but I'm gonna release that little clamp. There's the cable. I've seen so many people change their own speedometer cables, like they completely have them misrouted. Um, the problem with that is you're gonna end up breaking the cable prematurely. So first of all, you gotta disconnect the speedometer cable. Don't necessarily need to remove the whole um, handlebars. Maybe you'd wanna take this apart and replace the little clock batteries in there if it's dead. Typically it is on an older scooter. Older so just use the wrench, just loosen that a little bit. Uh, some have a nut, some have this knurled um, little doohickey here. That's pretty much how that all disconnects from the speedometer. And it's out of the clamp. And you can see the cables uh, free right here. So next I'm gonna lift the front wheel off the ground. And I'm gonna accomplish that with this little scissor jack. 
Um, if you're a home mechanic, you use anything that ranges from cinder blocks to make something out of wood. Um, phone books, if you still have those around, I don't know who uses those, but that would work perfect. Um, whatever, just something to support it. Bikes on the same stand, so it's, it's very stable right now. You know, it's not going anywhere. You know, kind of like a tripod between the center stand and the, the jack that I just put in there. Definitely makes it easy in the workshop. These jacks are used every day for everything from basic oil changes to major service like pulling a motor out. Pretty handy. So if you're, um, you know, if you have a well-equipped shop, I would re definitely recommend like a little scissor, scissor lift like that. So I'm gonna get the wheel out of the way. The reason being is it makes the job much easier. It is possible to work around the wheel, but come on, it's only five fasteners. And another uh, cheater tool here, power ratchet. I do like these because you have a little bit better feel than if you're doing a, using an impact. So next we're gonna go ahead and remove the speedometer cable uh, from the hub itself. This is the hub right here. And inside the hub, you have obviously the suspension components. It's got the carrier for the, the disc brakes. I'll go ahead and pull the caliper out, check the brake pads just to show you. Um, you always want to feel this, especially on an older scooter, if there's any griminess to it, the grease may have broken down in the hub. And there's also a chance that your speedometer cable isn't broken, but it could be the plastic gear and the old crusty grease that has um, damaged the small gear in here. But we'll go ahead and pull that all apart. I'll put some new grease on there. Uh, we'll check the brake pads. You <laughs> Just right here is perfect time. If it is grimy, I'd recommend taking apart the whole entire hub, re-greasing it, replacing the, the O-rings and the seals in there. And if it's way up there in the miles, it may be worth, um, you know, uh, replacing the wheel bearings as well. So, so brake caliper, same fasteners as the wheel pretty much. So you gotta remove this one. On, in many cases, they have this little clip that goes right there for the, uh, holds the speedometer cable. Uh, some instances, some versions of the scooters that you don't need that. Just, and if you notice, only one washer on the top uh, brake caliper fasteners. So brake, brake pads look perfect in this bike, or this scooter here. Uh, no issues here, but you know, I'll leave that out of the way. Kind of makes, makes the job a tiny bit easier, just not having that hanging in the way, so. Uh, got that loose. Typically they have either a Allen, mostly an eight millimeter um, fastener, or eight millimeter, a five millimeter fastener use an eight millimeter head to hold this little plate. And this is a carryover from the vintage Vespas. You know, start, starting you know, in like 77 with the, the Vespa P, the P125X, P200, very similar design. So it's a carryover from several years. So the little plate pulls away. Uh, sometimes this rubber thing will stay behind with the, um, with the hub, but it was stuck with the, um, the cable. So we'll separate that. You got the plate. Uh, at this point, you know, you can, you're pretty close to changing out the cable, but uh, we're gonna take this apart a little further. I'm gonna show you what's in here. So after that rubber, rubber spacer thing that puts friction on the cable hole in place, there's a, um, this little metal spacer. It doesn't, doesn't take much effort to remove it. You can use a needle nose. Uh, that comes right out. You see some of the grease. It actually is pretty hard on this thing. It's not, not the greatest grease. We never uh, used all that great of grease on these things. And once that spacer's removed, uh, it reveals the speedometer gear. I wanna tell you about these speedometer gears. I think they're pretty much the same across the whole entire um, range. And one way to help remove it is you can turn the wheel backwards and pull it, carefully pull it out with the, um, the needle nose as you're turning the hub and it kind of disengages it. Not much grease on there, it's pretty dried up. Uh, still in good shape. I wouldn't hesitate to reuse this. 
uh, but pretty inexpensive if you do want to change it out. You know, here at the shop, I have the luxury of having these in stock, so no, no big deal. Um, there's two directions to it. This side, um, I don't know if the camera gets at, it's a little bit smaller opening. That's the side that goes in, in, in board of the hub. The side with the larger opening engages with the cable. Uh, that's the side that goes outboard. So we're not gonna take the whole hub apart, but if you do have an older scooter, it may be a good idea to take, take all, all that apart to re-grease grease the whole thing. So got some of the Maxima grease. It's really good stuff. It's not, not the same formula as they originally used, but it doesn't seem to have a problem you using this for years. So re-grease the gear. Just for good measures, give it a little, um, a little plug of grease in there because there's a, a gear on the, um, on the hub itself. Then we'll go ahead and we could slide that little gear right in there. So, and you can feel it. See how I was turning the wheel? I could feel the thing turn in there. So I know it's a working fine. Uh, it's extra grease on there. You definitely don't want that left behind gets on your, your brakes, not a good idea. So. so as you can see inside the fender, there's this little bracket that retains both the brake hose and the, the speedometer cable. I'm trying to do this blind here, find the screw. There should be a little uh, Phillips screwdriver or screw. And using a short little screwdriver here to remove that single screw, goes right into a, um, a clip that attaches to the fender. You'll see that little clip left behind so go ahead and get the bracket all the way out and as you can see the the brake hose is in the rearmost position of this little bracket so so you can see the cable it's in front of the brake hose just like it is in the bracket and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it down one thing about the cable it does have this little rubber thing so it's a little difficult to kind of fish through and it also goes through the top of the, um, the fork casting or the knuckle, you know, where the fender attaches. So it's a little difficult to do. Obviously, if you had the whole fork out, it's real easy to do because you don't necessarily have the fender, fender in the way. So, but I pulled that all out, no big deal. So before I install the cable, I'm gonna show you both the autonomy of a speedometer cable. This is across the board, whether you're with a vintage Vespa or this modern Vespa with the speedometer cable, along with a variation that Piaggio uh, made a change. I don't know how to say in their 2010 or something like that, they changed, changed the design for the better actually. So first of all, this you can see the cable right here. If you turn the cable, it just pretty much spins. And even with a new cable, they do put a small amount of grease on it. It's always a good idea to put uh, more grease on it. So from the end that connects to the speedometer, go ahead and pull the inner cable out. You can see there's very little grease on this. So always a good idea to put grease on this. Only needs a small amount. There's different thoughts of how far you should put grease up the cable. Uh, one thing, if a bunch of grease gets in your speedometer, sometimes it could cause issues. Uh, I haven't really seen that ever occur on these, but um, that sometimes is the thought with these cables. So less grease up at the top, you know, which has that little brass brass thing. I don't know if you got that in camera. It's kind of moving around. And then we'll go ahead and fish the lightly greased cable back through the, uh, the new housing here. Uh, it is possible sometimes to get a new uh, inner. Believe me, it's not worth the hassle. The reason the inner oftentimes breaks break is because there's a kink or the uh, the housing is breaking down. So it's just best just to change this whole entire um, cable assembly. Very inexpensive on these modern Vespas, no big deal. But in some cases we do just have the inner cable available. Next I'll talk about the, uh, the changes on this design. So you look, you're like, whoa, this looks totally different. There's nothing, nothing similar about this here. Um, you know, the cable still comes out about the same. The old design, if you recall, there's this plate, there's this rubber, and there's this metal thing. Well, guess what? 
all those parts of, uh, are just now molded into the cable. So you don't need these three pieces with this newer style cable. And with the replacement cables, they sometimes come the newer style in most cases, but sometimes they'll come as the older style where you'll reuse these um, three little bits right there. And also they don't use the little clip that holds it to the um, brake caliper. Much simpler to install, I like it. They hold up better, they have less problems, so it's for the good that they made the change. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and feed this back up in front of the brake hose, same way we did, um, you know, remove the other cable. So, so this, this is always the most challenging, exciting part of the whole job here. It's kind of pushing this through. And as you can see, if you had the wheel in the way, it's you know, much more difficult, you know, working around the wheel. So I got most of the cable up there. Still the rubber is in between the fender and the, um, the, and the top, top section of the fork casting. And I just used a screwdriver to kind of push, push that rubber up. So if you're having difficulty poking that large rubber um, grommet up, you can always grab it with like a needle nose and pull it right through the hole. You can just see it barely fits through. So that's pretty much all the parts that are of the cable that stay at the top here. So, so before I hook up the bottom, I typically like to reconnect the top. And you can see sometimes the cable won't want to go in. So ideally you could just turn the cable until it engages with the, the square the square slot on the bottom of the, uh, the speedometer mechanism here. So get that up in there. If you're having difficulty of it with the cable going in there, I've sometimes found you may need to file the end of this a little bit. You can kind of pull it up and kind of see, you know, goes in there, it's, works pretty good. It's no problem there, so just, and you careful, you want to be very careful when you tighten this, um, this uh, thing. It's real easy to cross that, this little guy. So, so the cable kind of in its natural state kind of bends down. You can see there's like a little bend to this elbow here. So that's, that's how we want to leave that. Take your pliers, only give it a little, little snug because like I said, it's really easy to break this thing. So that's all you need to do. Uh, this little guy just stays about there. Sometimes it's attached to a cable, sometimes it isn't. If it's sliding around like this, you can put a little zip tie on there. To, kind of keep it uh, in place. I'll show you what I've done once I get my hands out of here. So kind of keeps the cable, that little grommet thing from sliding all the way down the cable. So so kind of make sure the sweep is good. Uh, we're going to go back to the bottom and kind of work, hook it back up and just, you want to make sure everything's uh, Good, because these cables, the big problem with them is see how much it like kind of bends around when you take a right hand turn. That's what tears up the cables. It ends up breaking them up here. And so it's just real critical when you, you know, for the life of the cable is, you know, reliant on how you install it. So. so even before you hook up the cable to the hub, I typically like to turn them counterclockwise. Make sure the cable turns freely. There is some resistance because it's going up this flexible shaft. Um, and when you do that, you should see the, the speedometer needle bounce a little bit. So I'm turning it counterclockwise. Um, just kind of do a little check. Last thing you want to do is install a part and realize, oh, something else, or I got a problem with the speedometer, or the cable's bound up and doesn't turn and then it ends up breaking other parts when it, it goes back together. So I put a, a small amount of grease on those O-rings, um, that gear in there. Go ahead and engage the, see how it just kind of went right into the, the, the plastic speedometer gear. No big deal there. So pretty much just push that right in. A lot easier than dealing with those three other components that were used on the older style. And then we'll take our eight millimeter combo wrench here.
Don't need to go all that tight. It's small fastener, five millimeter fastener. And voila. So you can see the cables in the right spot. The little bracket's gonna go right in the, the same spot. And obviously a caliper will go right there, no problem. So So it's pretty self-explanatory on reinstall installation of the bodywork with the exception of the glove box latch. Sometimes if you're not familiar with the latch, um, this latch has got to be on the back side of the key lock assembly because the key lock comes in here and it pushes on this. So the technique I have for these kind of uh, glove boxes, I'll actually put my finger with the glove box door open. You always want to have the glove box door open when you install these. So put my finger on the latch on this side. And if you act, act on a latch, you kind of open it. So you'll be able to put it right up in between where the lock assembly is. And of course, before you close a glove box, make sure the little latch works. Because um, if you close the glove box, you know, latch it, and the latch isn't working, it's going to be a little, you have an extra couple steps to get it back apart and fix it. Um, pretty much that concludes. Replacement of a speedometer cable. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this uh, is pretty much the exact same steps, whether you have an old Vespa ET250cc, one of these LXs, uh, any of the GT models, GT200, GT125, GTS250, 300s, made up to about 2014, including the GTV. The current GTV still has a mechanical speedometer cable. Actually, that one's a little more complicated to change out just because they have the headlight up on the top. Um, we've changed quite a few of those over the years, but got a mechanical speed a speedometer cable on there. So, you know, that's 2020. They still are using one scooter with the mechanical speedometer cable of the modern Vespa range. I uh, hope everybody found that pretty useful. Uh, maybe just watch this just so you have the knowledge on how to change it if you ever come across you need to change it. But it's certainly a video that I know a lot of people have asked. Um, and I know speedometer cables and the little speed speedometer drive gears are very popular items on our web store, ScooterWest.com. Until next time, it's the robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. Check out our YouTube channel, subscribe, it helps us out. We're like the number one Vespa channel on YouTube right now. And I wanna to continue to be motivated to make videos, so subscribe, watch all my videos. Like seeing that, wish I had time to answer questions. I don't, I work a ton of hours, sorry. <laughs> um, until next time, Robot here.